Hey everyone, it's This Week in Bourbon, your finely crafted and artisanal distilled bourbon news. And here's your headlines for December 17th, 2021. The Kentucky Bourbon Benefit will take place to support Kentucky's Tornado Relief Fund. Buffalo Trace adds NFC chips to Thomas H. Handy foils. And A. Smith Bowman is releasing a 15-year rum-finished bourbon. But first, before we get started, here's a quick word from our partners. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com. And you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine and More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and be 21. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 a cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Welcome back, everybody. Another edition of This Week in Bourbon. And Ryan, I'll tell you what, I am super excited for this one. I've been excited for This Week in Bourbon yet because this has got a, a little bit of everything here. We're going to be talking about raising money for everything that just really detrimented our state, you know, or decimated our state last week. We've got we've got that. We've got some technology baked into this. We've got some high age statement bourbon releases into this. The, the year's not over yet, so we got a lot of cool things to still talk about. Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, yeah, and prayers and thoughts to everyone in Western Kentucky. It's just been terrible seeing what you all have been through. And the the only shining moment out of this is like just seeing the community get behind everyone. And it's been just an outpour of support and resources and whatnot. And it's proud, makes you proud to be a Kentuckian and, you know, know that we got each other's back, you know, and uh, it's just terrible what they're going through, but we're we're trying to make the best of it. It is. And I know everybody that has that knows somebody in Kentucky has probably been affected by it from some way. It's just one of those seven degrees of separation. And I, I remember when I first heard about it, I was going through and I was looking through you know my Facebook feed and I didn't really see anything until a few days later until I saw one of my friends that went to I went to college with lost everything. And it was really it was really sad to kind of see that. And, you know, I'm I'm really hopeful that a lot of that, everything that everybody's really donating and putting forward to this will help bring a little relief, uh, a little less stress to it. I would say that the one good thing that I did see is when I saw the pictures of, you know, my, my friends from college, they all had smiles on their faces. It's kind of one of those things that you have to just look at it and say, at least we're here. You know, at yep. least we, we, have, we're, we have to be grateful that 
we survived and we get to rebuild and we get to, we still have our family intact. And, and so it is, it is heartening to be able to see that and, and be able to know that some good thing can still, you know, come of this at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm excited to see exactly, you know, what all these big benefits are, are going to bring to it. But I, now that you mentioned it, I do want to give a plug for it because we have our own benefit going on. So anybody that doesn't know, we, we do this every single year. It's our Christmas charity raffle or raffle auction. Uh, you buy raffle tickets is kind of what it comes down to. You can go to burdenpursuit.com slash Christmas, and it is going to lead you to our fundraiser page. And as a part of that, one of the recipients is going to the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. And so we have 10 different packages available. Nine of them are with 30 plus bottles that we have selected this year. Everything ranging from Sagamore, Bullet, Four Roses, Buffalo Trace, uh, Savage and Cook. I mean, you name it, every barrel that we picked this year is up there and you can buy some raffle tickets and every single dollar that you donate is going to go towards one of the recipients of of this. And so far, as of this recording, uh, we've raised close to $8,000 and it will end on December 20th. So if you're hearing this right now, please go and check it out, bourbonpursuit.com slash Christmas. And you can go ahead and get a few raffle tickets and get entered and, you know, you can win some bourbon, but also help a good cause at the same exact time. Yeah, for sure. It's a, uh, it's one of the best parts about the bourbon community is like how charitable they are and how giving they are. It's uh, I, I still want somebody to do just like an economic study on like how much money is raised every year through bourbon. Uh, it's got to be in the millions for it's, it's crazy. It, and it's awesome too. Well, think about just this year, think about even the past five years. I mean, it's it's got to be tens of millions at this point, but yeah. let's go ahead and dive into it because that really hits our, our first topic of the night, or really our first headline, is that the Kentucky Distillers Association, along with the Bourbon Crusaders, and of course, good friend of the show, part of the show, Fred Minnick, they are creating an epic fundraising event to help support the recovery and rebuilding efforts of the tornadoes that ravaged Western Kentucky. So this is called the Kentucky Bourbon Benefit, and it's going to feature an online and live auction of exclusive private barrel selection experiences, rare and vintage spirits, and unique tasting and tourism offerings from Kentucky's signature distilling industry and their charitable partners. All proceeds, all sorry, all proceeds will be going directly to the state's uh, the the official team Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. So of these, there's things. So there's going to be 20 different private barrel selection experiences uh, where you can go and choose your own barrel and everything like that. Uh, there's going to be, uh, I should have said that Bourbon Crusaders went and raided their collection and donated dozens of limited edition and single barrel expressions of bourbon, rye, and scotch whiskeys. And distillers also reached in their back closets and donated a bunch of rare bottles that disappeared from retail shelves long ago, including, and this is Inside word from Fred Minnick that there will be a Pappy 23 decanter that is coming from Preston Van Winkle. So something that is probably going to auction for close to $30,000. This is going to begin on Thursday, December 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern and run until Tuesday, December 21st at 10 p.m. There will be a live stream auction that will be held on December 21st starting at 7 p.m. And that's all going to happen at Westport Whiskey and Wine in Louisville. Uh, however, due to COVID restrictions, you cannot be there in person, but you can watch it online and bid online. So the bidding is, you said the 16th or the 21st, and then they just going to reveal the winners on the 21st. Is that how it's going to go? Or Yeah. So there's, there's going to be a mix. Of, there's going to be a grab back thing. So first, I, we've donated some bottles from the Pursuit Spirit side. So there's going to be some other Pursuit series and some Pursuit United. I know, Ryan, you've donated some stuff that's in your collection as well king of kentucky that uh 2018 it was i can't remember the proof i don't know it's (laughs) it's bottle 52 of 85 i know that it's a 14 year yeah Uh, i found it and i was like well just because i found it i'm probably going to give it away Mm -hmm. and because it's going to do much better for them than in the bottom of my cabinet so so there's going to be some bottles that are going to go straight auction, but there's also going to be some bottles that probably like some of our, our ones that are still on the shelves, like Pursuit United, that will be straight sort of buy it now sort of things just to kind of get some money rolling through the door and, and everything like that. So you're going to have opportunities to kind of get stuff at a at a fair price, but then there's also going to be some, some unicorns that are going to go as you would expect a typical auction style. But yeah, not this is a unicorn, but 
I am I did donate in episode eighteen. I know that it's a unicorn amongst some people in our community. So true. If you haven't had episode eighteen or you need a backup, there will be one uh, during this auction. There you go. Yeah, that's uh, and that's and people don't know that's one of our most highly sought after rides that we have ever selected coming from Finger Lakes. It's just the funkiest, awesomest thing that. Again, it's it's kind of like if you know, you know kind of situation. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this whole event I'm looking forward to. We've, we've both like taken turns emceeing the Bourbon Crusaders, you know, charity event uh, that's, you know, typically it's around this time, usually October, November. Um, and they partner with a different charity each year. And I mean, it's usually like crazy, you know, you know, people donating $75,000 a barrel for you know, four, I think the last time I did it was a four roses, 16 year barrels. And there was EH Taylor barrels. And I think the year you did a bunch of Willet barrels and stuff. So it's a uh, Berman Crusaders is, is an awesome organization and it's great what they do for the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. So make sure you make sure you go check that out. So remember December 17th through, sorry, December 16th through the 21st, and it will all happen online. So you can go and just look at Kentucky bourbon benefit. So here's another news article that came out. I, I originally was going to put this as a headline, but we couldn't have four headlines. And that is because Breckenridge distillery, it was founded back in 2008 and it was known as the world's highest distillery. Well, Global cannabis company Tilray today, or sorry, not today, but last week, it announced that it has acquired the Colorado-based Breckenridge Distillery for around $10.29 million in shares. So Sweetwater Brewing Company also joined Tilray more than a year ago. And so with more than 85% of Breckenridge sales generated in Colorado, there is a big potential to expand nationally by leveraging Sweetwater's distribution. However, Tilray sees the two beverage alcohol companies complementing each other as it plans for THC and CBD products here in the near future. So this was this was something that I think that is, it's kind of like flipping the script, right? You had Constellation brands that started investing into THC companies, and now you have THC companies that are buying bourbon brands. So this is really interesting to kind of see what's going to happen. I think, and Tilray is betting on legalized cannabis in sort in in sort of drinks so it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen there yeah because i mean well cannabis is already legal in colorado so but maybe not in drink well you can get drinks but maybe not alcoholic and cannabis exactly. mixed together um but yeah they must be betting on that uh sweetwater is the 420 is that Yes. Uh, well, that's that's one that, or pale ale or whatever. That's the oh. one everybody knows, I guess. <laughs> I guess it seems how ironic that fitting, right? <laughs> 420 is going to Colorado to begin the CBD and or whatever THC and bourbon business. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, I, I'm actually kind of mad this happened because I had this for our next round table. I was going to make this prediction for 2022 that there was going to be something that's going to be THC or marijuana driven with bourbon. And ended up happening before the end of 2021. So now I've got to figure out a new prediction for 2022. Yeah, I, I'm interested in it. I'm just worried about like the dosage and like like how like how, how far you, can you like, take it? Exactly. Like like with edibles, you know, you know, if it's like in a, they they give you the milligrams and you can kind of piece out and understand where you're gonna go. Like I think sometimes like, you do until you well, take one. And you take like, you take one, and then you're like, "This thing hasn't hit. This thing doesn't do shit." Take another one. And you're like, "You can Wait always a add more." <laughs> That's my rules. You can always add more, but you can't go back. <laughs> but it's like, okay, is it one ounce is equals this much booze and this much? And then you know, so you're like, okay, I can only have an ounce and a half or three. Uh, you know, that's I don't know. It kind of I'm trying to interested because it sounds dangerous. You know, you have a whole bottle of basically gummies and booze in a bottle <laughs> sounds like a uh, good luck yeah it's it's one of those things you have to you have to know your limits first with booze then you have to know your limits with thc and now you got to try to figure out together it's <laughs> together yeah that's yeah we're gonna need a somebody to create a pamphlet for us or something <laughs> it's sharpa <laughs> like Here's your here's your online video to guide you through yeah. <laughs> this drink. Can somebody please on YouTube figure this out for us before we go too far down? Absolutely. Yep. All right. I'm gonna get in trouble here. Yeah, let's keep going here. <laughs> so I think we can all agree that we need to do what we can to protect the environment. And Kentucky bourbon probably wouldn't be 
what it is without the minerals from the state's water, the color, and the flavor imparted by charred white oak, or the mash bill that's made from corn, rye, and barley. Well, WFPL is an affiliate of NPR, and they did a story on the future of bourbon and climate change. And this is looking at all the resources that potentially could be at risk, and bourbon producers do know about it. So the U.S. is consuming white oak for bourbon barrels faster than we can go c- grow trees, which they say that what we've talked to Brad uh, Boswell. That's not true. I know. We've talked to other people on the show, and they're like, the housing industry uses all the wood. It's not not this. Anyway. Yeah, but anyway, th- that's a lie. There's 30% more There's th- 30% more trees in the U.S. than there was 30 years ago. That's a lie. So there you go. keep going. There you go. It's shooting down NPR as we go here. And it yeah. said that farmers are losing their topsoil to practices that deplete than rather than restore the land, which that's just crop rotation at the end of the day. So if they're not doing it, then that's on them, right? Uh, watersheds face threats new and old, and that's where enough of and that's enough of it to go around. Now, on the other side of the production are the greenhouse gas emissions it takes to make, bottle, and transport Kentucky bourbons all across the country and globe. Now, this is where it kind of starts turning around. So, Brown Foreman, Diageo, and Beam Centauri have pledged to reach net zero carbon emissions in the coming decades, which is around 2040 to 2050. So the white oak trees behind the new charred, or new charred barrels will be used in bourbon, taking around 50 to 70 years to reach maturity. And Brown Foreman plans to purchase 50% of its logs from sustainability managed forests by 2035. Brown Foreman is also working with a couple dozen farmers to try to bring rye back to Kentucky. So by 2025, Brown Foreman plans for all of its direct farmers, including those that grow agave and grapes, to engage in regenerative agricultural practices. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to give them credit, but they're just trying to take advantage of tax credits. You know, that the whole, <laughs> you know, the whole buy, you know, Biden thing is like all green, and which is great. You know, there is climate change, but there, there's more carbon. But with more carbon, there's more trees and more plants growing across the globe. But uh, no, I mean, we should all take a an effort to, you know, do what we can for the planet. Uh, let's just, I think we've done a good job. I mean, the, you know, as ISCs talked about how you know, where they balance, you know, harvesting and replanting and how oak forests are more stronger because of them, because naturally they need fires or, you know, lightning or rotting to, to, to have a healthy forest. And they're, they're doing that on their own. So. Mm-hmm. No, you're probably right. It's probably getting some sort of government, government subsidy to offset all this. And it, it's funny when I saw that, oh, they're going to be taking care of it in decades to come. It said 2040 to 2050. We got some time still. <laughs> yeah. And then policy will change by then. There'll be a new sum initiative by then. They'll be like, that's what we're doing. Oh, gosh. By then, who knows? The ozone might not even be a thing anymore. We'll just have plastic floating in there or something to help save us. There'll be aging trees on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> and Bezos will be shipping them down in spaceships to here. <laughs> it, it reminds me. You remember going to grade school and t- taking home like saplings? You have those like little oh, trees yeah. to take home. Yeah, you know, like Earth Day, you got to take a little sapling <laughs> and plant it. And then dad whacks it with a weed eater. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, that speaks the truth right there. Yeah, I was just yep. thinking they're, they're going to start giving saplings out at work and you've got to go home and plant them if you work at all these companies to try and be like, we're going we're gonna to make good in this promise, I swear. That's all right. It's all, it all, all right. sounds good. Yeah. So we've talked a, a little bit with Greg Metz at, old elk before about slow proofing. And so there was an article that came out by Vine Pair this week and it, it talks about slow proof proof sorry, slow proofing whiskey and what that means. So unless something's bottled at cask strength, all whiskey at that point is having water added to it. And that's after it's matured and that brings it to its specific proof. Now most distillers calculate this by weight and volume about how much water is be needed to bring a whiskey to their desired final ABV. And so they just add water to the tank. And sometimes they just wait a day or two before bottling. But some small distillers are taking a more deliberate approach to proofing by slowing it down and adding water in small increments over a long period of time. So before entering the whiskey world, Nancy Fraley, who we've had on the show plenty of times before, she worked with a lot of brandy distillers and she learned about slow proofing from them. And she said it's a technique that's really never been used for whiskey and nobody's even heard of it outside of the brandy world. So if you try to add water to the barrel from bottling strength too fast, you're just going to end up with what she said is called a soapy mess. And she said that soap, pla- that soap flavor comes from soponification, which is a chemical reaction in which fatty acid breaks down. 
and Greg Metz, who we just talked about, who's a longtime MGP master distiller who now makes Old Elk, he says he also slows proofs his bourbon, rye, and wheat, wheat whiskeys over a week and a half through simply just proofing it at a significant impact. Or sorry, they say that slow proofing it has a significant impact on the whiskey's palate. And Fraley also says that she sometimes employed what's called petite eau. I, I, I don't know if it's like <laughs> I'm French. I'm probably butchering that. Uh, is to build further flavors in the finished Petite product. Ayo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure our brandy counterparts are like, oh, these guys. Um, no. uh, where it is to actually build further flavors in the finished product. And again, this is borrowed from cognac, but this technique adds mature whiskey to water by slowly and incrementally uh, and ages the solution in a barrel after months or years and the whiskey, sorry, the, the liquid is used to slow proof a whiskey. So interesting mm. way to be able to do that one. <laughs> Bourbon, once again, it's the perfect marketing thing. You can say anything is, but no, I trust those two. Nancy and uh, Nancy has some of the best blends we've ever had. You know, some of those Magnus blends are fantastic. And uh, obviously Metz is, gosh, a legend and all his products have been fantastic. So, uh I, we'll have to try it our next batch. Let's. You think BBC will let us slow proof? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's that's what uh, one of the things in the article said that most people don't slow proof is because you don't have time to sit there and hold it in tanks. You've just got to get it right. in and get it out. And it's true. I think when we had talked to Lisa Wicker at one point about, well, how long do you leave a Widow Jane batch in a tank before She's you like bottle three it? Three weeks, right? Three weeks, absolutely. And we were like, that that seems like a, quite a long time. So I don't think this is something normal that you see inside the industry. However, I don't know what we're going to end up, if this is going to be a, a, a de facto standard. I know that when we have bottled United before and we talked to BBC about it and we've talked to our old bottle about it, I mean, they have tanks with agitators and they've got tanks that basically try and, and you know, mix it up as fast as they can. And you don't really need to sit there and, and let it marry over time. Is there going to be a difference? Probably, but it's, I would think it's probably minute at the end of the day. We've been doing bourbon for, I don't know how many decades. And all of a sudden we think, oh, we've got to, we got to slow, we got to slow proof this because it's going to be a completely different product at the end of the day. Well, all we can do is try and test and compare. See, Very true. but nobody's going to let us try. So, <laughs> well, we can do it in like 200 ml, you know, samples. True. We don't have any blending takes yet. That's no one day. That's a goal. Next purchase. Next Big purchase. ass blending take. Let's that's do right. that. All right. So this is an article that came out of Forbes and it talked about, should you invest in whiskey funds? So there was a, a, a whiskey fund that was called the platinum whiskey investment fund. And it was one of the world's first private equity funds to focus on rare and single malt whiskeys. Not bourbon, but just hear me out here. So it was organized back in 2014 with a projected term of seven years. And the fund has now announced its successful liquidation. From its initial funding of around $12 million of USD, the fund generated net proceeds of around $26 million. Okay, pretty good return so far. That is a gross annual rate return of 17%. Whiskey investment funds have grown dramatically over the last decade, and according to the often touted Knight Frank Luxury Investment Index, this benchmark index of rare whiskeys saw its asset values grow by a staggering 564% over the last 10 years, and this represents a yearly return of around 19% over the decade. And this index measures the price changes in a group of 100 different rare and collectible bottles of scotch whiskey. Given that there are over 3,000 Scotch whiskey expressions, the index only attracts around 3.3% of available Scotch whiskeys. And here are among the most notable holdings that were in the fund. So the oldest bottles in the fund were a collection of 36 bottles of 1902 Highland Park 50-year-olds, which were taken and distributed by many of the fund's investors. The oldest cask in the fund was a Talisker 1980, direct from Diageo, which will be bottled as a 45-year-old in 2025 and will likely be the oldest single cask of Talisker ever bottled. The most valuable bottle by selling price is a 60-year-old 1926 Macallan, with a label by Valero Atomy, which was sold to an Asian private client for those close to around 1 million uh, GBP or 1.32 million USD. And the most profitable collection was 300 bottles of 1981. I'm going to screw this one up. 
Kuruazawa, Founders Cask 30-year-old from Japan's Kuruazawa Distillery, which delivered a 300% profit in three years between the purchase and disposal. So there is Dang. money in investments of whiskey. I need to sell my companies and just dive into that fund with those returns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, hopefully... As soon as I put my money in, they'll be like crash <laughs> yeah well that and uh one remember there's one bottle in here that 60 year old was for 1.32 million so right that's that's a lot that's a lot Once that goes it'll uh be like my peloton stock just <laughs> crash and burn <laughs> it's it's a lot at the beginning of the pandemic but oh man alive did that thing tail off people just realized oh, yeah. they could start going and eating cheeseburgers again <laughs> yep they're like, oh, I'd rather pay to go to the gym. Just didn't. <laughs> um, it's probably not even that. I think it's everybody sat at home and they said, you know what? I got time to work out. I'm going to do this. And now we can go eat cheeseburgers or steaks or do whatever. I'm just going to hang. I'm just going to hang my clothes on this Peloton. Not pay the <laughs> subscription. <laughs> Fold my laundry on this. Yeah. It, it does probably make a good clothes rack at the end of the day. It's a good, yeah. what was it? What do those things cost? Like $3,000, 2000 yeah, I think they were like twenty seven, twenty eight hundred bucks, and then you got the thirty dollar a month subscription model. It's a good, it's an expensive clothes rack, but it does function. It does. Yep, hangs them nicely, for sure. So, Maker's Mark, they have announced that the are they have announced that they are doing something brand new for the holidays, and it's called Whiskey Flights, and this is a promotion designed to help lighten the load of travelers quote unquote, extra baggage this holiday season. So travelers 21 plus can hurry over to whiskeyflights.makersmark.com and you can upload an eligible checked baggage receipt for the chance to have Maker's Mark reimburse you for your checked baggage fee, up to around $50,000 of fees covered by the entire brand during this promotion period. So Maker's Mark aims to actually help travelers come prepared with bourbon in tow. So the, the idea is that you go and buy bourbon and you put in your bag and you check it. It's not just like, say, you just go check your bag and you got to yeah, do this. The idea is that you go and you have to put bourbon in your bag and then you go check it. And so they want you to be able to focus on more important things this holiday, like safely and joyfully coming together with loved ones after months apart to toast the moment. And this promo will run from December 15th through the 31st. So it has to be a maker's product? Is it, it doesn't. It doesn't say anything. You just have to... I mean, yes, you can get around it and you could submit a receipt for just a check back. But the idea is that you come to Kentucky, you come to, you go to wherever it is in the, the U.S. Yeah. You buy a bottle off the shelf. You can't bring it on the plane, but you can't put it in your checked luggage and take it with you. So they want to yeah, help can. you. Yes, you Why can can't put you it in your check. Yes, you can't put it in your checked luggage, but they want to, they want to pay the bill that you get to usually pay for your checked luggage. You're, oh, see, so like if you, if you normally don't want to check a bag. They're, Ryan, Ryan, you always fly Southwest. I fly so Southwest, you, so I'm not used to paying. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, this doesn't work for a Southwest traveler. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You always fly Southwest. You don't know what it's like to have to pay for baggage fees. Yeah. I get two bags for free. <laughs> Every and time. And a carry on. So anybody that flies literally any other airline, you can go and you can you can do that. So again, that's at whiskeyflights.makersmark.com. I thought it was going to be like they give you a kit, you know, that you could it's enough to like carry on with you. Like, no, know, no you know, no. a bunch of airplane bottles or whatever. No, actually but, that's, that's technically illegal. You can't even bring your own whiskey on a flight anymore. Well, I think you can, you just can't open it. Okay. Yes. You can do that. You you can yeah. bring it on the plane. You just can't open it on the plane. You do I know, that. Back, back in the day, I'd bring them be like, yep, I have some Pappy on my flight, you know, <laughs> just bring <laughs> Not, in an airplane bottle. Now it's, you can't even, they don't even serve alcohol anymore. Uh, I don't know if that'll true. ever come back. Uh, some of them started again. Um, I think some of them are are doubling down and not doing it, but who knows? That got me through some Vegas flights, you know, got four or five hour flight and you're like, what am I going to do? Drink. <laughs> yeah. It, mimosas the entire way, right? Right. It's the only time I drank wild turkey. Not not the only time. Sorry. <laughs> That's, I drank wild turkey on Southwest flights, but, you know, because wild turkey was on Southwest, but yep. anyways. Big brand connection there too. Exactly. So this is an interesting story that I found, and this is because we all have dreams of hitting the lottery. I mean, if if you were to say, if you're going to win the lottery the next day, you'd probably think like, oh, I'm going to buy a boat, or I'm going to buy a house, or I'm going to go travel the world. Well, in Alabama, they have a high-end liquor lottery, 
And a writer for AL.com was actually the winner of what they call the golden ticket. And <laughs> I so, saw this. Yeah. So here's what it looks like. So back on Saturday, December 11th, she was assigned the the spot number 21 out of 100 at the Madison location, which was one of only seven liquor stores in the entire state that was doing this. And so with guaranteed spots, the sweepstakes winners were given a list of products with the words golden ticket at the top. And there were plenty of serious collectors and people that knew their stuff. But of course, there's a lot of people there that don't know anything beyond the words of Pappy Van Winkle. So the first table is the most highly sought after products, and you can only purchase one bottle. And this table had things like Pappy Van Winkle and other really high priced bottles. You can purchase two different items from the second table. On the third one, you can choose as many different items as you like, but you are limited to one bottle of each brand. And finally, on the fourth table, you can choose up to two bottles as of many items as you want. And so she said she had marching orders to go and pick up a bottle of Sazerac 18 on the first table, and she had put it in her cart and she got it for $99. She thought it was really more expensive than any other kind of single food or uh, drink items she's ever purchased, but it can, she said it paled in comparison to the other ones that were available for, such as an OFC 1995 listed at $2,500, or a Double Eagle Very Rare, which was priced at $2,000. There was some Pappy Van Winkle as well, but with prices ranging from eighty to three hundred and thirty dollars, and the table's two highest price tags. Must be nice. Yeah, no shit. Tell me, right? <laughs> and so, uh, as you said, table two had some other stuff. Table three had some other stuff. I'm not going to go into it, um, but she said that the entire process took from start to finish about thirty minutes, and she ended up with nine bottles, while a man behind her had around two shopping carts full of booze. So, I think I read in there and they were like. I finally got her eyes. She's like, I got, or whoever wrote said, I got Buffalo Trace because the guy said it tasted good with root beer. It was the, <laughs> I was the, like, what? The, the Buffalo Trace cream. That's what it the was. The cream. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was like, all right. Well, there you go. I know. I, I tell you what, I, I don't know if I, if I agree with this type of lottery because you have the ability to spread the wealth amongst a lot more instead of giving, you know, a select few people the chance to, come away with a ton of stuff i guess like if you win you you're like this is this is the greatest thing ever but if you don't win you don't like it so (laughs) i I don't know i don't know what to think of it but all i know is i think she's crazy to go to the first table and go with a sazerac 18 when you have double eagle very rare sitting there but then again it's it's one of those things that most people just look for pappy or they look for that one bottle they don't they don't know about all the other crazy stuff that's out there in the market yeah or they see the exorbitant price tag and they're like oh but when in reality that's worth a lot more Mm -hmm. yep but i mean gosh there's probably a table full of elmer t lee's and uh, maybe parker's and some probably a lot of other stuff that she could have came away with and she just didn't have any idea and so that's one of those times that it's you know like a, a good opportunity is wasted on somebody that just doesn't know yeah yet yeah. it's like with uh thc whiskey you need a you need a start sherpa to <laughs> yeah. guide you through the lottery <laughs> yeah just because some guy knows about pappy or knows about sazerac 18 you you're gonna have you need a, one of these podcast listeners one of our fans out there that really knows what they're doing to to if really you guide win, you through this if you win your next lottery you know who to call <laughs> absolutely so yeah if you're if you're on the al.com lottery or alabama.com lottery and you're just unsure of your buy just we're your guys yeah we'll fly down there we'll we'll help you through and we'll take three quarters of whatever you don't want <laughs> that's right <laughs> we'll let you have the bourbon cream yeah, as much bourbon cream as you want. We'll, well, actually, we'll we'll help. We'll subsidize all that. We'll bring you as much Barton's bourbon cream you want, or flat boat. <laughs> as much as we can find, for sure. That's right. So this is our other headline for the night, and we've talked about counterfeits plenty of times on the podcast, and I've even shifted blame over to the distillers, but it looks like we have a glimmer of hope after all. So Charles Sacito posted on Medium this week, he's also posted on Facebook and a bunch of other places with his article, that he opened up a bottle of 2021 Thomas H. Handy and noticed there was a chip in the foil. And so a near fields communication tag, or called NFC, uh, was in there, and that's what we were looking at. So he did some digging, and he found that Buffalo Trace gets these foils from Inport Yeti and saw that there's a new technology being implemented called Intact, and that is allows all smartphones to verify the authenticity of the bottle to prevent counterfeiting and gray market diversion. 
So he downloaded an app called NFC Tools, and sure enough, data began to start populating about the bottle, and it said that it was opened because he opened the foil, put his phone next to it, and that's what it said. So the NFC tag within the foil should be compatible with most new smartphones. You might need an app, but it might just work without one. The tag is likely using a passive sensor to detect when the foil is open, which is why we see the circuit continue down the side of the cap in the image that you would see towards the top that he had posted. So from Charles, he states that he could probably imagine in the future that there will be a branded app just for this. So Buffalo Trace will likely keep their, maybe create their own app that will keep a better track of all their bottles and inventory through the supply chain that will provide more insights and marketing and consumers will be able to rest assured knowing that they have the real thing. And I even personally test this with my own bottle of Thomas H. Handy. And, and of course it did. It worked. I was able to put my phone next to it. It scanned, brought the bottle up and it said unopened and it gave a little bit of data on it. Uh, I even tried it on uh, this year's William Lou Weller and Sazak 18. It did not work. So apparently the theory is that they are testing it on Thomas H. Handy's for the 2021 release. So this should be interesting going into 2022. Yeah, that's awesome. It's wild. I was at this cocktail bar earlier at the Grady Hotel, new hotel in Louisville, and they had one of those for their menu at whatever NF, you call it NFT or well, I, or it, what'd you call it? Well, it, uh, NFC, NFC, NFC. So, well, near anyways, he would, yeah. Well, it's he not like it's not it's not a QR code. No, no, it's no, like, no. I, yeah. I know it, it. I know what QR codes are. Come on, Kenny, give me credit. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was an NF, and he just slid this thing, and I didn't it didn't even scan my phone. It was just like near it, and it just popped up like, and it said NFC menu, and you tap it, and it opened up the menu. Like my phone was just sitting there, and it got, and he just put it right near it, and it opened up the menu. And I was like, what is that? And he's like, it's an NFT. And I was like, I think they're putting those in bottles now. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd read this story. Uh, but yeah, that's 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 pretty awesome because, yeah, that'll hopefully reduce counterfeits or, you know, deter them even more with that. So kudos to Buffalo Trace. And I like how they didn't even announce it. They just did it. Well, I think that's one of those things that was probably slow rolled and somebody just found it. And I think that's that's the cool thing about it. Uh, with the community of diehards and some other tech nerds out there, they just said, I know what this is and started putting their phones next to it and, and started finding data. I think that's that's incredible. And Yeah, I, hey, man, they, on this bottle, they had this really cool block thing. You put your phone, you take a picture of it. And it <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, um, you remember like, uh, what was that wine that you could kind of oh, like 19 that. crimes Snoop yeah 19 Dog. crimes yeah you have the i think it's what that augmented reality sort of thing but anyway i, I think this is this is going to be a, a great topic for the next round table as we start discussing what this could really mean for the future i have a i have a feeling that what charles said here is is on point you do have the opportunity to be able to thwart a lot of uh counterfeits because you you i mean anything that is you NFC say that, based. but well, I people mean, are smart. They'll hack that. Well, I mean, anything that's NFC based, it's like basically like you put the foil on there, you register that ID or that serial number, whatever it is, to your database, and you can't just go and buy other foils and 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 add them to your particular database. So there would have to be some breach of data at Buffalo Trace or whoever owns this database, and that's I'm sure how. that database is hackable. Well, <laughs> anything's hackable, Ryan. Right, anything is. So there's. But this is a step in the right direction. No, 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 no totally. doubt about it. No totally. doubt about it. It's somebody if somebody invests the time to hack into Buffalo Trace's database to, but humans done crazier shit to to try to make money an illegal way. It's like, it's like, all right, why do you put all this effort into making something illegal? Like, do something that's good to to make money. You know, it just takes the amount same amount of effort. But anyways, yeah, maybe they did it with Thomas H. Handy first because they're like nobody's nobody's counterfeiting a Thomas H. Handy. <laughs> I know. I don't know why they did that. I would. I I would thought they would done on like lot B or something. You know, something that's more popular. I don't know. Well, I mean, who knows? I haven't. I haven't seen. Well, any, sure, I haven't even seen any pet pappies yet. Yeah, it's like I don't think I'm going to see any Van Winkles this year anyway. So the odds of even being able to test it are going to be pretty low. However, I just like to see this. This is really cool, and it's also probably one of those things that. They're probably sitting on tons of foils anyway. So let's use all this old stuff up right. before we do a, a big sure. shift. So or they have a bunch of them sitting on a you know, in a cargo container <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> somewhere. Like, 
gosh, we really want to use these, but we only got the handies in. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be another six months before this container gets across the rest of the world. Maybe that's why Stag didn't come out because they couldn't get the NFT chips. (laughs) There you go. There you go. We'll we'll talk about that a lot more in the next roundtable. I I sense that coming in the future. But let's go ahead. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back with some bourbon release news. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at Shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to Shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. All right, it's time to start talking about what's happening in bourbon release land. What are those new hot bottles? Well, it's the end of the year. There's not a ton of stuff to go through, but we do have a few different things. You know, we had talked about uh, in that last story about Buffalo Trace bourbon cream. Are, are you a, are you a bourbon cream person, Ryan? Do you enjoy it? The only time I ever drink it is Christmas morning with my coffee at my in-laws because they have it every Christmas morning. And I'm like, why not? It's Christmas morning and I have with my coffee. That's the only time though. I tell you what, I would drink bourbon cream if I drink coffee. It's I really good. It's awesome. I tell me about it. I just wish I'd drink more coffee. But if you're if you are a bourbon cream person, just know that Jim Beam is also dropping their own bourbon cream now. And this is uh, not only just dropping their their bourbon cream, but they're also coming out. Is it out. toasted? <laughs> Everybody's coming out toasted. Why not? <laughs> But they're also coming out with the first board game and a new holiday kit. And so this bourbon cream comes at 15% ABV, and it's now available at select retailers nationwide for about $20. But in the in the spirit of celebrating and getting to the good stuff right away, they cre- the brand created a holiday kit that includes the quickest wrapping paper. It's literally see-through, so you don't have to unwrap it to see what's inside. It's the shortest holiday story, so you can spend less time reading the holiday stories and more time creating your own with family and friends. It's the fastest board game. Yes, they created a real board game that's made to last only a few minutes instead of hours, so you get back to your drink. And they've also have the easiest and quickest recipes to help you prepare at your home with signature cocktails for the night. So really kind of cool that they're um, doing that. You can check out more at jimbeam.com slash get to the good stuff. It sounds like they're giving you a bunch of stuff you don't want to do. And they're <laughs> yeah. trying to make it. They're trying to make it get as over as fast as possible. But anyway, hey, I, I just like they they put a little bit of thought into the the no, marketing. No, I, I think it's funny. I yeah, like it for sure. So this is uh this was I actually read this one earlier today. I wasn't going to add this, but I thought, what the heck? Why not? It's Crown Royal. Crown Royal. Okay, it's not bourbon, but they had a bourbon mash at one time and. There's probably a lot of Crown Crown Royal drinkers out there. Honestly, we've had Dusty Crown Royal before, and I think it's fantastic. But they are coming out with their latest expression, and it's 18 years old. However, this release is accompanied with, it's actually being commissioned by celebrity grills maker Scotty ATL to create four exclusive grills set using the depth of liquid as the inspiration. So with grills this really, like on your teeth or grills, like cooking grills? Like on <laughs> your teeth, my friend. Oh, boy. So this release um, is 
it's going to have, what did it say? Oh, so only four of these grill sets will be available in the world. One was molded for Scotty himself, and two were made for Grammy-nominated and Atlanta playmaker duo Earth Gang. And one is set up for auction via Pop Shop Live on December 15th at 6 o'clock p.m. The public will have an opportunity to bid for a chance to own this piece of luxury with the proceeds benefiting the Atlanta Artist Relief Fund. Crown Royal will match the final auction sale price up to $10,000. This is bottled at 40% ABV. And again, it's 18 years old and has a suggested retail price of $140. And you get yourself a grills with it. <laughs> Actually, you don't get Paul, it with it. But Was it Paul Wall that had a grills song? I don't know. We'll have, we'll have to ask Nelly? Our, I think Nelly. Maybe it was Nate. We'll have to ask our uh, house rap expert, Blake Reber, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he knows I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Nelly. Nelly Nelly was big in the grills back in the No, I'm a STL. Thing. You go to the next topic. I'll look it up. All right, you do that. I'll be like fingers on uh uh yeah, it's Paul Wall. Came Is that what it grills. was? Yep. All right. Well, I'm glad you figured that one out for us. I'm sure everybody was on pins <laughs> and needles. <laughs> waiting actually waiting for you to actually that was the quickest Google search you've ever done. We didn't have to take actually a break there. Oh, wait a minute. We're both right. It's Nelly and Paul Wall grills. <laughs> It's a song, so we were both right. Absolutely, I, I'm just I'm just glad I, I had I, I had a little bit of rap history there in my head that we could bring to the table. There, we heard it audio one time. <laughs> so Cascade Hollow Distilling, uh, their general manager and uh, distiller Nicole Austin has unveiled Cascade Moon 13 year old rye. These barrels containing aging rye arrived at Cascade Hollow in 2012, where they spent nearly a decade in their single story rick houses. The Cascade Moon 13, sorry, Cascade Moon 13-year-old rye will start rolling out on shelves in Tennessee, Texas, and California and will be priced at $300 per bottle. They say that it's an extremely rare and limited release and will only be available during the holiday season. Dang. I do like me some Cascade Hollow rye. I've never had 13-year. Yeah, yeah, but 13-year rye for $300? Man, that's that's pushing it. We, we were just talking about it, I think, last week that we were doing whistle pig picks, 17 and 18 years old, and they were, what, 100 bucks? That's true, yeah. Mm. Or you can get Pursuit United Rye for like 65 so. Hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, I'll slide that one in there. Which, yeah. hey, I tell you what, we've I'm, I'm floored so far at the good reviews that have been coming out. I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, more or less pat you on the back, but it's it's fantastic to see, uh, you know, DJ from Rare Breed 101, he's he's a Rare Bird, sorry, Rare Bird 101. He's posted a lot of positive reviews, and we've also seen from Dallas Bourbon Club and a few other people, so it's it's awesome to see so far. I do love how they call it Cascade Hollow instead of Dickel Rye. Yeah. <laughs> Cascade Hollow sounds a lot more elegant, mm-hmm. for sure. Elevate, elevate, elevate. That's right. So here was our last headline for the night, and that is A. Smith Bowman Distillery is announcing the latest release in its Abraham Bowman series of experimental whiskeys. This is a 15-year-old Abraham Bowman rum-finished bourbon. So the bourbon in this release, which aged for nine years in American white oak before finishing in rum casks for an additional six years. This release, they say, may just be the oldest rum cask finished bourbon ever produced. So this 15-year-old bourbon has an intense reddish brown hue, and master distiller Brian Pruitt described it as bright and lively, noting the aroma begins with notes of well-aged bourbon and will be available through the A. Smith Bowman Distillery gift shop on a first-come, first-served basis on Saturday, December 18th. This release will also be available through the Virginia ABC Board Lottery. Quantities are very limited. The total age of this bourbon is 15 years old. It's bottled at 100 proof and has a suggested price of $70. Nice. I like the Bowman stuff. You think Virginia will tag onto the Alabama lottery system? You know, winner get, takes all. You might want to get that golden ticket. <laughs> He's got the black chips. Cash them in here. But six years in a rum barrel? I yeah, mean, that's... When we talk about port cask, tawny cask, um, yeah, it's usually cherry, like three, it's, it's, three to six months, right? Yeah, and and at the most eighteen to twenty four. So this is this is definitely a long, long aged. Send us a bottle. We'll try it. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. <laughs> That's right. That'll do it for this week in bourbon. We had a good list of everything from tech stuff, high age stuff, and talking about bourbon cream and golden tickets. Yep. Sign me up. I want one of those golden tickets. Give us two. Give us two. And some I, Cascade Hollow Rye. Yeah. And plus, that guy that had two shopping carts, we'll up them. We'll come over with three. I guarantee it. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Yeah.